All right, in this video, we are going to work on this practice problem. Write a TK enter program that allows the user to enter a number of minutes and then convert it to both hours and days. For example, 6,000 minutes equals 100 hours and 4.167 days. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to import TK enter. And then I'm going to be using the object oriented approach. And I'm going to create a class called app that is a child class of the TK class. And then inside that, I'm going to create the init method. And the first line of the init, I am going to call the init for the parent class. All right, I'm going to set a title for this app. And a geometry, so I don't have to keep resizing it. I'll go 250 by 100. All right, and then uh, I'm going to have three labels in there. Uh, one for minutes, one for the results, and then another for um, the actual, displaying the actual results in there, and then an entry as well, so the user can enter that information. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that. Results label. Actually, I'll um, call it uh, there. I'll just call it hours, days label. So I'm just going to use one label to display both. So I'm just going to call have the text here results. And then the other one I'm going to call uh, results label. And this is the one I'm going to actually put the text in that I want to display to the user. So, and for right now, we'll leave it blank. Um, here, I prepended this with self, right? Because um, I want to be able to control it from another method within the class. Um, whereas these are just static, nothing's gonna change here. But this one's gonna change. I'm, I wanna be able to control that from the event handler method. So I made it an attribute, right, by putting self in front of that. And then, um, I need the entry. And because of the way I imported up here, import TK, enter as TK, I need to put TK dot in front of all these. And then finally, I need a button. I don't need to put self on that, TK dot button. All right, and then I need to place these actually into the app. I'm gonna use grid here. So first minutes label, I want that up in the top left hand corner, so dot grid. So that would be row zero, column zero. And then um, below that, I want the hours, days label. So that would be row one column one or column zero uh, then the minutes um, entry self dot minutes entry dot grid I want that next to the minutes label so that's going to be row zero column one And then 
self dot results label. I want that next to this label here. So hours days label. So that's going to be in row one. And then the next column over would be column one. And then finally the button. Um, I'll place that next to the results label, I suppose. So that would be actually let's do it below row two uh, and then column one, I guess. Uh, because this label uh, could change. It's probably going to be pretty long, the text I've got to put in there. So it would result in the button kind of jumping around. So we'll just put it in row two below all of this stuff, below these, and see how it looks. Okay. Uh, and then outside of the class, I need to create an instance, an object up from that. And then I need to call the main loop method to kick off the event loop in there. Uh, and it looks like uh, right here, I forgot the equal sign. Okay, so that's what it looks like. That looks good to me. Okay, so next up, right, I need to um, be able to enter some minutes in here. And when I click go, it should do the conversions and display the results here. So let's go ahead and start setting that up. So I'm going to use the button to trigger that. Um, and I need to put the method in here that I'm going to call. I'm going to call it calculate hours days. And then down here, um, let's see, that needs to be in line with that. So calculate hours and days and so because it's in the um, because it's in the class let's make this because it's in the class right I need to refer to it as self right it's part of the um, it's a method it's a function defined inside of a class here so that's how we would refer to it Okay, and so then what do I want to do when the user presses the button? First thing I want to do is to get the stuff out of the entry um, widget. Uh, we've seen that there are a couple of ways to do that through string bars. Uh, you can also do it just with an entry with just the get method. And so I'm just going to um, use the get method here. Um, so I'm going to call it minute string because we're going to get it out as a result and here's where I'm referring you know to that minutes entry so that's why I used self here so I could refer to it from outside of uh, that method the init method and it's dot get so that gets whatever the user has um, entered into that box when they after they press the enter key right it's going to call this method and come down here that gets what they typed out and then we need to convert that Uh, to a float. Then we need to make the calculations and those calculations are that hours is going to be minutes divided by 60, right? And days is um, minutes divided by, I think it's uh, whatever 24 times 60 is, I think that's 1440 looks right and then what I need to do is to put that whatever it is that I want to put in into this results label here so that would be self dot results label equals um, and then to set the label you're gonna to have to use configure right text equals and then here's where, where we'll put what we want. So let's put hours, colon, and then comma, 
0.3f hours or and here we'll put the variable days and we will use a comma as the thousand separator and display it round it to three decimal places and then days here. So that will put this text into the results label. So let's see, it has no attribute calculate our days. So that looks like a typo. Um, yeah, here I have calculated hours, days. Here I have hour, days. So I need to make that consistent. So that looks okay. And so here when I enter 6,000 and click go, right, 100 hours or 4.167 days. I think that's what we had here. Yeah. So that's looking correct. However, if I enter some non-numeric text in there, um, you can see that it's going to cause this exception. And uh, so I need to take care of that. Uh, so you can see that's line 25, which is this line right here. And the error or exception that was thrown was a value error, right? So what I need to do is to put uh, that in a try block. And then add the accept block, accept value error. And then uh, what am I going to do if a value error comes up? And then basically what I want to do is just to display some message to the user. So I'm just going to do that by putting some text into this label. So I'm just going to put invalid input into that. And then I also want to return out of this method. If I don't put that return there, what's going to happen? It's going to play, display invalid input, and then it's going to try to keep going, and it's going to cause more uh, exceptions to get thrown. So just quit after that. So let's give that a shot. So if I type some garbage in there and press Enter, I gotta click the go button here. I see I get invalid input here. And then if I take that out and then put um, a value for minutes in there, then uh, correct value, you can see that it gets the correct information in there. All right, that's it on this one.